Hey everybody, just wanted to do about my GFX 50R and some of the lenses that I've adapted to it. I haven't seen many videos online that talk about this. Uh, I've seen a lot of posts, whether it be in the GFX group on Facebook or um, on some websites and some blogs. And I want to do a quick shout out to Jonas Rask. He's got a very, very good blog that he writes about uh, Fuji cameras. I think he's a he's a Fuji X ambassador, um, and I'm not. So this is not a, a paid video or sponsored video, and it's not sponsored by Squarespace or anything like that. You know, this this is all stuff that I have bought with my own money, and um, so I, I'm not giving you a biased perspective and the one thing I like about uh, Jonas though is that he he does not uh, give a really biased opinion uh, his he, he tells a lot about the um, pros and cons of cameras and the lenses and stuff so he is one of the main reasons that that I had the inspiration to buy this setup in the first place and for those of you familiar with this system you know it's um, the GFX 50R is one of two uh, Fuji GFX medium format cameras. Uh, the, the 50R is the rangefinder style. It's not really, uh, it's not a true rangefinder. It's just like I basically say it's the Fuji XE3 XL. Um, it's, a, it's really, it looks to be the same camera, but it's just larger with a medium format sensor. And it's got a very good form factor, although the body is in the shape of a brick. So, whereas I've added, um, a grip to it you know the camera is more compact if it doesn't have you know these attachments to it now the 50s is the slr style body and it's more modular has the removable viewfinder and i think it uh, you can get a grip for it and then also the um the gfx 100 you know that's the big boy uh 100 megapixel which really no one needs <laughs> I, th I think that's just a bit overkill but hey you know if um commercial landscape printing or something is your your thing then that's good but this is my main portrait setup this is what i use in the studio out in the the field and when i bought this originally i bought a 50s and i got scammed on ebay and it never arrived and so i ended up saving my money to to get this camera and I did not buy it new from Fujifilm. I actually got this as a, uh, it was like a display at a camera store. And they had took just like three or four photos with it, put it back in the box, and then sold it at a discount. And I actually bought it cheaper than what Fuji's discount is uh, to this day uh, on it. So, it, you know, I got a super good deal. And the when it comes to lenses, I bought into this system knowing that... Oh yeah, we've got a guest here. This is Lulu. And if you've seen any of my other videos, then you will have seen her probably. But um, I'm having to handhold this camera, uh, by the way, on my phone. Uh, I can't find my little holder to put on the tripod, so you'll have to forgive me if there's some, some vibration or shake in this uh, with my old hands and arms. But anyway, when, when I bought into this system, I knew that there was not um, a lot of native glass available i mean there, you, you have your basic focal lengths for for this type of thing and the sensor in in this camera is not uh, what people would call true medium format get get out of that and it's not um it's not 645 it's it's slightly shorter bless you and it's um it's a it's a good deal larger than than 35 millimeter full frame and by definition medium format is anything bigger than anything bigger than 35 millimeter full frame so i got this because i was a at the time i was a bokeh file i really you know like shallow depth of field images i really love and to this day i love the the look and feel of large format photography and this is something that really um, I think as far as digitally, it gets you close to that if you know about the right lenses, something that I did not know about at the time. And it has nothing to do with your aperture number on the lens. It has to do with how the lens renders. And I, I've even, uh, when I teach a photo class, I even talk about this. And, it, and it's basically trial and error, especially with a system like this. Um, as you can see here, I do not own 
a native lens for this system. I don't have a Fujifilm lens for it. I have tried them, I've tested them, and I, while I like them, they're very clinical. Uh, the way the images look, and they're not, to my taste, they're not really what I want. And in my line of work, with this system in particular, I'm able to slow down a bit, and I don't have to have really fast lenses. Now, when I do need a little bit faster performance, that's when I will use the, um, the Tech Art adapter with my Canon lenses. And I can go off on a rant about using Canon lenses on this. You know, I made a post in the, the uh, Fuji uh, GFX user group that uh, went over uh, quite well uh, using the, the cheap Canon 50 millimeter 1.8 STM on the GFX, you know, which is a camera that's, you know, over three grand. But I digress. It's, I'll, I'll put some of the images in this video and let you see for yourself, and I'll make sure to label, uh, label them what, uh, what lens I used. And you tell me, you know, what you think. You know, my editing might not be to your taste, but this is not about my editing. It's, it's about the way these images look. And I have cropped a few of them. And I will talk about that too and why, why you will probably need to. All of these lenses, except for one that is sitting here, is for 35 millimeter full frame. And um, the majority of them are for Minolta, for the MD mount. And the reason I went with that is uh, to give a shout out to Jonas Rask. He, um, he made a blog post on his site about using Minolta lenses with a GFX and I was sold. Um, and unlike him, uh, I'm not a Fuji ambassador. I bought this camera and, you know, flat out, which I'm sure he buys his too, but he is, you know, of course, that's all he, he uses is Fuji film cameras most of the time. And I figured, you know, he might be giving a little overly positive viewpoint on that, but, but he's, um, I found this to be completely true and accurate to what he said it was. This is a dream system. If you're a portrait photographer, this is a dream setup. So, you know, and I know with my tech art adapter, I get autofocus and it's, it's hit and miss. It's, it's nothing like using a dedicated Fuji lens with this system, but the tech art adapter, as you can see, is like, it's, it's really thin. And why am I using this lens then? Well, on a normal full frame 35 millimeter camera, a DSLR or what have you, this lens, it looks good enough or if you're using it on APS-C. It's about a 75 millimeter, uh, you know, probably f2.8 or something like that, you know, what, what your look would be on APS-C. On this camera, it supercharges this lens. And the character that you get from it is outstanding. And, you know, and I, and I won't sit here and gloat about it or whatever, you know, you can see the images for yourself and then you tell me. Um, and also my other Canon lens I have here, that's the 40 millimeter, that's the pancake lens. And it's really great for doing like, a, you know, your street photography, almost like a 35 millimeter view. And the beauty of the GFX is, is you're able to use these lenses either in the full, uh, full frame medium format mode, or you have the option to crop in to the 35 millimeter as they would look on a full frame 35 millimeter camera and so th that's that gives you two distinct views that you wouldn't have with with another system and so just to quickly go over these lenses um, what I have mounted to the camera now I've got a photo diox adapter that's on here and it is um, it's for adapting my uh, Minolta glass. I might say Mamiya one or two times in this video, and I apologize. I, I had a photodiox adapter for my Mamiya 645 lenses. I had the 80 millimeter 1.9 on there. I loved it. It's just that I wasn't, it was a dummy adapter just like this one is. And for the Mamiya glass, I was not getting that true, you know, those were four 645 uh, cameras. Uh, so, I was not getting that true 645 character and look out of those lenses um, because they were larger than my sensor. They were covering a larger circle. Um, so anyway, those I, I sold those lenses because I no longer had a 645 camera. And I regret it now because they, they actually, um, a company called Kipon makes a speed booster 
that's for those lenses and you can actually get a uh, 645 field of view and actually better than 645 because this sensor size is so close to that of, of 645 the speed booster with a 0.7x magnification actually gets you a lar slightly larger than 645 field of view so it's the pictures I've seen are amazing but no one has has that I know of has purchased one of those yet and used it and done a proper review um, so I might be the first person you see on here that does that you know if I get the the hair up my butt to do it but I, I don't think so I mean that that's just um, I think that's a little bit overkill because the adapters nearly uh, it's like eight hundred dollars and I, I don't I mean it's but when you get into this system it's almost like getting in the Leica you're gonna start spending money and so you want to save up for the next the next big thing but to talk about what I do have here um, I'm I'm getting results similar to 645 out of these lenses anyway so getting that speed booster getting that larger field of view and stuff is probably redundant at this point it's probably not not worth it um, because this and for example what I have on here now with the the adapter this is the uh, Minolta 50 millimeter 1.4 and it is essentially a 50 millimeter or excuse me a um, a 40 roughly a 43 to 45 millimeter f 1.1 on this system so it's it has a crazy character to it and, and once again I'll post some pictures on here and you can see it from some of these and I'm just moving down the line you know there's the Canon lens I talked about that the Minolta pancake lens you know this one is this one's really cool and, and I got all these at, at a, it basically it wasn't even a car boot sale the, the, most of these were given to me um, the uh, 45 millimeter f2 is it, it's awesome for getting the wide angle shots and of course these are going to be manual focus but um, this one is a this is a Kmart lens from Focal but it's still a Minolta MD mount the 28 millimeter f 2.8 and you get a you get a pretty good amount of vignetting with this because it doesn't cover the whole sensor but you can crop in and it's it's amazing it looks really good um, the Canon pancake lens pretty much same story um, this lens here is a 35 millimeter Soligor and I think it was made by Tokina back in the day um, it was either Tokina or Tamron it's made in Japan anyway and it's it's like a made like a tank it works fairly well but it has it's the the optical quality is not that great this lens here this is one of the smallest 135 135 millimeter lenses that i've ever seen um, i was using my canon uh, 135 f2 l uh, on this system and but the the uh, autofocus was trash with the tech art adapter and i was you know, when you try to manually focus that lens the throw is so long that you're just like no it, it takes all day so this this lens even though it's not an f2 at 2.8 it basically becomes an f2 and on the uh, the medium format sensor uh, and it's so compact this lens is it is all metal but it's lightweight and the the character of the images is so good out of it and the next one is one that I have not mounted to the camera yet because I'm having to wait on China to send me all the parts to adapt it and if you guys are not familiar with what this is I'm gonna do an entirely different video on this later on when I get the parts in to mount this some of you will know what this is but th this is a Snyder lens that's for a cinema, uh, cinema projector for like a movie theater this works on a 30 for 35 millimeter film or for IMAX film this is an 80 millimeter f2 uh, and it has no um, uh, no aperture uh, blades on the inside so you don't control the aperture it's a fixed f2 so you're shooting wide open the whole time now why do people use these on cameras well anyone that's familiar with contacts uh, the camera brand contacts if they have seen images from their 645 camera that has the 80 millimeter f2 knows that that is a legendary lens and it produces some of the most amazing character with medium format images and this lens is essentially the same lens as that 
but it's in a projector lens form. And there is a company who, I'm not sure if I should mention their name because I'm probably gonna hate on them <laughs> uh, for a bit, but they, they, anyway, they offered this lens in an adapter setup to fit this camera that's already like put together. And I have to thank them though because I found out about this setup through them. So I won't hate on them that bad, but the only problem is that the cost of what they're selling it at. I just bought this lens, I don't know, about a week or two ago from a company in Atlanta that's not too far from me. And I got this lens, uh, I made an offer on it, and I got it for 150 bucks. And they sell anywhere from 200 to 500, depending on who you get them from, and depending on the rarity of them at the time. You know, because sometimes they, you'll see a bunch of them come available, and but then other times there's nothing. And this lens does come apart pretty easily too. I mean, this whole uh, front piece here, this one and this one is a hood. So the lens, you know, basically the body of it starts here and goes back. Well, I will further detail in another video of how you actually mount these to this camera or another mirrorless camera but basically you buy three parts online and that's it and for what you're doing here for this performance that you're going to get out of this it's extremely cheap and it might have cost me just over a hundred dollars for those three parts so I will have about 250 not even 300 um, in this lens setup here when I'm done the company that I could have bought the entire setup from, that I found out about this, is selling it for $3,000. So, go figure. And that's, an, that's a complete and total rip-off, but, but hey, you know, if someone's willing to pay for that, for the work to be already done, I mean, you don't have to hack this lens at all. There's no cutting, there's no welding, nothing. All of this stuff goes together, and once I get the parts in, it's probably gonna be more than a month from now, but I promise I will do a video on it because it's very interesting, and I'll show you guys some results from it. Another reason I'm doing this video, um, if I didn't say it the first, is because this, this type of setup is very rare in the GFX community um, because you have so many purists out there that for some reason believe and stand by it that you must have native glass if you're going to do really good work with these cameras. That is bullshit. And it's not true. These lenses, especially these old Minolta lenses, they are optically superior to most anything, any new 35 millimeter uh, full frame lenses that are available today. Try them out for yourself and see for yourself. Don't use my images as something to go by. I mean, look, I do edit my images quite a bit. Um, but I like the character that they give me. And in fact, I like the character of, of film as well. You know, and not in a way of these hipsters that use Visco on all their images and stuff like that. And hey, there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, if, if, you're, in, if you're a photographer, you know what I'm talking about. You know, it's just... I, I try to make my images look like film anyway, and, and Fujifilm, just at the in-camera JPEGs, they're good enough, but I, I do a lot of editing and, um, you know, try to make it look like that I took them, like in the 80s or something, and just just for character, because I think the new stuff is, it, it's very sterile um, and clinical. But anyway, that's the last but not least, you know, this is not all. Okay, my phone died, so where was I? Um, I was talking about the last but not least lens and I have it mounted on my <clears throat> my Minolta SRT 200 and it's um, this is the legendary 58 millimeter 1.2 Minolta this is the the MC version the older one the all metal so it has the metal lens cap and this lens is a beast. It really is, though. It's it's very heavy, and then, like on this, it looks good on this camera, but like it's it makes it really front heavy. Um, now, I bought this lens after reading a lot about it on Jonas Rask's blog when he 
when he was talking about it, and, and then he said this was the really the best lens you could get for that, um, for the Minolta Roundup on the GFX. And I, I think I think he's correct, uh, mostly. Um, there's, there's a few things, though, and, and I think it's about this lens in general. It really has nothing to do with its performance on the GFX, but... Uh, for one, th there is a considerable amount of vignetting in some of the images that, that I've I've noticed, and this is uh, I, I'm assuming this is the most expensive Minolta lens that you can buy today. Uh, I spent more than I probably should have on it, but this one, in this particular example, this didn't come with this camera. You know, this was one that I got at the uh, uh, car boot sale, but <clears throat> this lens was new old stock so it had been sitting on someone's shelf in in the box and not been used for for years and they they had it for sale on ebay and i got it at a steal uh, because these lenses typically go um you know as of 2020 they're they're going for you know anywhere between 350 to 600 and if you get them from japan they're really high um and I really don't see the worth uh, in that, honestly. I'm, you can see the images that, I, that I've taken with this lens on the GFX, and I love the character. I love the rendering of it. <clears throat> but I've just had ice cream. I'm sorry I took a break. So uh, if I'm coughing or something, that's why. I don't have coronavirus. Uh, <clears throat> but the, the GFX with this lens, this is like the equivalent of a Noctilux on there. And for some people, especially um, those that like to have really sharp images, this is not what you need. Now, this lens is pretty sharp wide open, but when you're shooting this on a medium format camera and you're shooting at 1.2, this is about the equivalent of a 50 millimeter F uh, 0.95 on full frame and you can tell like it's it's super super bright uh it helps the gfx see well in low light and also the um the character it has wide open is very reminiscent of these old school old timey um large format prints that i've seen in the past and so that's that's why i've kept it and that's why i use it but I find myself more often than not leaving it behind and using the 50 millimeter 1.4. Now, why would I do that? Uh, it's it has to do with something, and and you guys, some of you probably know this, and some of you might not, um, depending on your experience with photography. But it has to do with the minimum focus distance. So I'm going to try to do this one-handed, but I want to show you guys this. So on your lenses, you're going to, normally when, a, when like a manual focus lens like this, when you bring this all the way in, that's focused at infinity. So the, far, the farther that, that your lens barrel moves away, the closer it's focusing, okay? So the, the, cl the, the closer or nearer that your glass is here, gets to your sensor or in this case your film plane then that's going to be focused towards infinity all right i hope i'm explaining that good enough but anyway each lens has its own limitation as to how close it can focus so sometimes when you get macro lenses then you can focus a lot closer and and, and I will give another example. You know, this is, um, I'll just take a, a shot of this really quick. But f first of all, I'll explain about this one. The uh, minimum focus distance, down, they're, they're going to be marked by feet and meters. So this one, the minimum focus distance is going to be uh, two feet. Now, when that, it seems like that that's good and it, and it is, but not compared to, to some other lenses. Now, when I'm doing portraits 
and I like to get closer to the subject, really isolate them, then I'm, I, at minimum, I'm going to have to be at two feet away with this lens. Now, look, I don't want to be all up in their face or anything, but, you know, this could be for, I don't know, a flower or, you know, I'm not, I'm not one of those guys or whatever that buys a, you know, a $5,000 camera body or if you get the GFX 100, a $10,000 camera body just to take pictures of plants in their house, you know, and then post them online acting like they've, they've got works of art there. You know, I, I don't do that. But, you know, hey, kudos to them if they have the money and the, the time to do that. I, I'm, I like going out and getting models uh, for my photo shoots. So in comparison, the 50 millimeter 1.4 can focus at half a foot. Or, or excuse me, the, um, let's, well, let me make sure that my scale is right. Let me see if it's, uh, yeah, so uh, feet, th this is uh, one... Um, 1.75, so it's a bit better. Uh, roughly one and a half feet is is what the uh, is what the closest focal uh, minimum focus distance is on this one. So it's, it's the performance for that is better than than what you get with this. Now, of course, this is a you know 58 millimeter. That's a 50 millimeter. So they're going to be almost the same, but you can tell when you're having to back your camera away a little bit more. To, to get that shot. Now, in a more extreme example, you take the 135, and let's see what it has on it. Um, this one is, make sure these are all the same, yeah, so feet's in green. This is a minimum uh, focus distance of five feet. So you see the longer uh, the focal range is on the, the lens, um, then the, the farther you're gonna have to stand back. Now that's not always the case, you know. There's some there's some good examples, and uh, I'm interested about this one uh, because when I modify this one to fit the GFX, it's going to be very interesting because I will have control over this. Then, now what people do normally is they will get a like a macro extension tube, and they'll put on one of these so that they can move it farther from the sensor, and then get a much closer focus. What that will do though, most of the time, is distort your image so that, especially if you're shooting wide open with, an, with a lens like this, you're not gonna get anything in focus. You know, shooting wide open with this on the GFX is bonkers anyway, because you're, you're only getting, if it was not for the digital zoom um, on the GFX, th this would be impractical. It's hard enough focusing with this on a film camera, much less doing it on digital medium format without having that punch in. And without image stabilization, like you're, you're up shit creek without a paddle. Sorry for my French there, Lulu, but um, the, uh, the point is with this, these, these lenses are, they're very good. You can focus pretty close with them. But if you have control over that, whereas like with this one that I will, I, I'm interested to see the results of this, especially on an 80 millimeter. Um, now, let me show you. So I was going to, to um, originally record this on my X-T3, but every time that I try to record on that camera for some reason, I, I get better results with my phone, not only with the microphone on this phone. See, I'm not using a, uh, a lavalier mic or a... You know, one of those little fuzzy microphones. I'm not using one of that. This is actually, this is a Google Pixel 2 XL. And I've had it for a couple of years in the microphone, and it's really good. And the X-T3 microphone is good, too. But it's just, I don't have a way to, like, face down like I probably should have for, for this. So um, I've been sitting here next to the table. But this is the, the X-T3. You'll have to excuse me. My studio is, is nasty, and I've got stuff for my animals everywhere. Um, the X-T3, th this has the Mitocon 35mm uh, .95 on there. And this is my favorite lens, po possibly my favorite lens ever. And it's, it has such a, a short focus throw. So that's it. So for filming, like for doing weddings and stuff, this is my go-to lens. It, it rarely ever leaves the camera. And, and I must say, now let's, let's talk about the close, um, 
the close focus on this. The um, let's see, the minimum focus distance on this is one foot. So basically, uh, right about there, and I could focus on my hand with it. So that's amazing that it can do that, and. Once again, why would you do that? Well, the closer you get to your subject, the more isolation you're going to get behind them. So you can virtually use any backdrop and blur everything out, you know, when you need to. So, you know, because bokeh can be overrated sometimes, you know, so it's not all about that. It's just it's about subject isolation, especially if you've got a nasty, ugly backdrop or whatever. And but the X-T3, I'm finding that, and I don't want to turn this into a GFX review, but I have a lot more fun shooting with this camera than I do with a GFX. I don't know if it's because the shutter on this camera is, like the performance uh, frames per second is better. Um, you know, it can take a lot more photos or if it's just that this camera is lighter weight and more compact. This lens gives me the character that some of these on the GFX can. Um, although it, it is a PSC. It's it's not going to, to give you as much of um, of an isolation as you would want. You know, there's tons of videos online that's, that compares this uh, to like the uh, Canon EOS R um, and the Nikon's and stuff or whatever. But that that's all, all that's crap. You know, the, these cameras they are the reason that APC that APSC is relevant today. Period. I mean, they're, they're the reason why, because those film simulations that's in there, the X-Trans sensor is amazing. The colors from it are, are great. And a lot of the time, I will get images out of this camera that I'm much more pleased with. Because, uh, in fact, my girlfriend, she uses this camera a lot. And this is her go-to camera. She also uses the... Um, uh, when we first met, actually, I, I sold her, which I regret now, I sold her my original X100 uh, Fuji, the 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 original that that was when it's they still had a bare a bare sensor in there they didn't have the X trans in there, and the that camera took amazing images it was just slow as hell, and she still has it she still uses it and I was using the X one hundred F at weddings and sold it recently and I also regret selling that I regret selling any of my cameras you know it's just I needed the money at the time I wanted to buy a lens or something so I sold them and but this one has been probably the best performing camera that I've ever used and I'm really interested in the X-T4 and it's not um, it's one of those things that do I really need image stabilization that much and do I really need this you know flippity floppity screen when this one does just as good of a job and I like being able to have it in this orientation behind the camera so that when I, me being a taller man, you know, I'm, I'm 6'4", just under 6'5", um, most of the time I have to bring the camera down for my models or it looks like I'm standing on a rooftop taking a picture of them all the time. And so that's the, that's the drawback because with the flip out screen, then you've got it out here and you're, you know, you've got a lot more room to work with. I don't know. There's like, there's pros and cons to that. So I, I might, I might get the camera and try it out or something, but, but back to the subject of this video without me rambling on, um, I need to, I guess I need to just sum this up. The question why that you would use adapted glass on, on a system like this or, or any other system it comes down to your taste in photography. What, do, what sort of character do you want your images to have? And I made a GFX review video that I never posted to YouTube about my thoughts on Fuji's native glass. At the current time of recording this video, which is June of 2020, Fujifilm has still not produced a lens for this system that is wider or brighter than an F2. Now, many of you would be thinking, well, come on, that, that's plenty bright enough for this system. It's a large sensor, whatever, but I want more. <laughs> and when I can, when I can uh, adapt lenses that give me the character that these do, you know, I find Fuji's 
lens is lacking, except for the one, the 110 F2, which is the, the best lens for this. But that lens is three damn thousand dollars. You know, that, that is so expensive for a 110 F2 that's going to give you the same performance as an 85 millimeter F, uh, F1.5 on a Canon. You know, why not just use my tech art adapter and get the Canon 85 1.2 and call it a day? You know, I could do that. But I haven't yet because I'm waiting on the uh, the 80, I think it's the 80 millimeter 1.7 that Fuji's announced. And that's going to be, that, that I might sell all the, <laughs> I might sell all of this ju just to get that lens because um, if the, the autofocus performance is really good, uh, that, that's, that's going to be a killer, killer lens for this system. It really will. And um, I also want to touch on one other thing. You know, I, I, I should just put this in another video and I might just do that. But I want to talk about the relevance of this system before I go. This system here is not going anywhere. The GFX. It's not going anywhere. I've heard a lot of talk and hubbub about the possible discontinuation of this camera line. And it's not going anywhere. I have seen the popularity of these cameras skyrocket over the past year. So many people are wanting to get into it. I've seen people go, go away from it. But I just know that if you guys have any questions about adapting lenses to this system, feel free to ask me. Um, I have a lot of sarcasm. You know, I, I'm, I'm from the South. I have a Southern accent, as you can tell. I've mentioned that in my other videos before. And, um, but I don't take shit off anybody. And I posted some pictures in the Fuji GFX group with, with, that I took of my friend Desiree with that Canon 1.8, a uh, 50 millimeter 1.8 STM. And the, uh, the moderator removed a guy for his comment to me asking me, why would I use such a shitty lens? And, I, and I'm not quoting him, but he basically said, why would I use such a shitty lens on this system? And I wish that he didn't ban him. You know, I wish that he would, he would not have been banned because I took the question seriously instead of me, you know, wanting to just jump to sarcasm, even though I did post a, a, a GIF uh, comment or GIF image on there. Um, you know, like, you know, this, this guy, you know, he's, he's got to be that guy. There's always one. But um, I don't mind the hate for that. I don't mind it at all. Because these, these losers are the ones that are not willing to try something like this with this system because they've got their nose stuck up, you know. Uh, well, they, they've got their head too high in the clouds, is all I'm saying. And this stuff works. It might not be good enough for your clientele if it's like a corporation wanting some work done or whatever where they have to have pure edge-to-edge -edge sharpness and you know they really need those 50 or 100 megapixel images but i'm telling you i've been a photographer now professionally for almost 12 years and i'm telling you right now that i just did a real estate photo shoot with with this system and i used this cheap ass focal kmart lens from this i i don't know if that's a, a, a it's probably 80s and I used that on the majority of my wide-angle shots, and they had zero complaints. Zero complaints. It was fine. Because all they're going to do is post that stuff online, and where the, whether it's Zillow or whatever other website that they're using to put their images, they're going to compress the hell out of them. And so it's not going, going to matter. You know, you don't really have to have that quality, but if it does in your line of work or whatever, this might not be the you know the best option for you. Stick to Fuji's glass or whatever, and, and you you'll be fine. But I just I, I think that the jump from 35 millimeter full frame to this setup is not it's not worth it if you're going to just stick with a native glass for that, unless you just have to say, oh, I've got a medium format camera for my real estate work 
because a lot of them, you know, they ask you for that. You know, you have to have medium format or large format to do it because that's just your getting in the door card. Um, you know, you're part of the club at that point. You know, it's not about that. You know, I'm not, I'm not about this ex um, exclusive group of Fuji photographers or anything like that. You know, I, I'm just a, an ordinary guy that takes pictures and I really enjoy this system. You know, it's, um, it's brilliant. The colors are brilliant. The performance is great. I wish it had more frames per second shooting, but you know, they're, they're going to upgrade it eventually. They're going to come out with another version and I might do a trade in or something. But, um, if you guys are interested, you know, watching this, I hope it gets some views and, and some interest because I, I see a lot of people in the groups that, that ask me, after I post some pictures, you know, how does this perform? How do you like this lens or whatever? If you have a request for me to do a video showing you about some of this on here, um, you can't find this on YouTube. I've looked, you know, I, I've tried to find videos about people adapting these. You know, Jonas Rask, he does have a YouTube channel, but he barely ever posts anything on there. He probably doesn't have time. Um, but this this video is really a shout out to him and, and I, I owe him a, a big a bit of gratitude for showing the images that he took on, you know, on, on this. And it, it really inspired me to pick this up. And now I've started um, really experimenting with some lenses. And, and this one here, I think, is really, really going to be special. I can't wait to show it off. So, um, but I'm done rambling on this one, guys. I mean, the next one, I'm probably going to be talking about the GFX in general. And this is a, a bit of a... Um, a break from what I usually do on my channel. I've got other stuff on here, you know, about my cars and stuff, but I, I want to talk about my cameras more because this is my passion more so than cars is. It's just that, that I, um, I got my, uh, some stuff in for my cars and, and all, and I, I'm, I've got a big set of wheels over there that I'm wanting to sell. So I, I've got a lot of stuff going on, but I, I just thought that this might be helpful to some of you out there that wanted to, um, to adapt this. So if there's any questions, or if you guys need um, any help uh, trying to find parts, you know, for this, like the adapter, I can send you some links. And um, once again, you know, I, I don't have any discount codes. I'm not sponsored or anything like that. You know, I'm just trying to uh, be a, sort of a good Samaritan to those that are out there looking to do something like this. So, but till the next one, see ya.